I'll go ahead and I'll explain to Jade what we want him to do for this test. I'm just going to have him move his feet up a couple inches. You don't want him pushing their feet against the floorboard. <coughs> you want him to keep their muscles really relaxed and use their tummy muscles because you want to reduce the volume. So I'll go ahead and explain what I wanted to do. So this next exercise is a blowing exercise. What I'm going to ask that you do is take a big deep breath in like you're blowing up a balloon. Once you get that breath, go ahead and put that bugle in your mouth and start to blow out. Once you blow out, there's going to be a little line here that moves up to that 40. I want you to hold it there for 15 seconds. There'll also be a little timer up here that's counting down for you so you know where you're at at all times. Any questions? And again, you want your muscles, your feet muscles not, and your toes not pushing it against the floorboard. And also tell them to keep this arm relaxed. A lot of people will, because it's hard to do, and it, they start bearing down over here in the phenol press. Oh, making your fist. And... Or, yeah, it's just like, it's like blowing up a huge beach ball or air mattress. Like, lifting up their heads. And yeah. another thing they'll do too is, when you say, okay, blow, it's all of a sudden their head comes up and they're doing a crunch. And so... Those are the three things to, and then tell them not to talk after they get done because that's the first thing they want to do is yeah. cough. Or that was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> or your pause patients, I feel lightheaded, I feel dizzy. <laughs> it's the biggest thing, technician, zip it. <laughs> okay, so Jade, whenever you're ready, go ahead, take that nice big deep breath in and just begin. Okay, is that 50? We're holding it for 15 seconds. Not and so you can see up there, we've got timer up at the top that started there. Jade has a timer up here that started as well for him. And go ahead and relax. Just breathe like you normally would. Try not to say anything. This next 30 seconds is the most important for our measurement of that Valsalva ratio. And this is another thing that's done just a little bit differently. If you're looking at some of the slides that have come out of the Mayo or any of the, the, the literature, um, we actually make three marks, not just the two. Um, we make one when we ask the patient to take a big deep breath in. You'll see that there's a little bit of change that happens with that. And then we don't make that second mark until they hit at least 20 millimeters of mercury, and that's when our timer starts. So we don't start that timer as soon as they start blowing. It's once they're above 20. Some of the other things that are really important is we don't want them going from 40 to 20 to 40 to 20. We really want them to get up to a steady temperature and to, or a pressure and to hold it there. Um, and so that's some of the stuff that we're looking at as technicians to be sure that they are doing a steady pressure. Um, if for any reason they couldn't maintain 40, this is when we would say on the next one, just go to 30 this next time um, and hold it there. Um, there is settings that you can change that within the software, um, but normally we, uh, we don't have the luxury of all these nice little automa automatic markings for us, so um, we make them ourselves. There's an example of a flat top response. Uh, you, you see there's really not, looking at mean blood pressure, there's really no drop below baseline. Um, we would normally now tilt him up to 20 and then uh, subsequently 40 degrees to induce more of a blood pressure change. Uh, you can see his heart rate did change, but there wasn't a dramatic rise in heart rate, and that could almost be an abnormal Vasalva ratio now because he has this flat top response configuration. Now, we don't have the luxury to have a tilt table here, unfortunately, so option is we just do another one supine or we, had, we do one sitting. We can try that. Sure, let's do that. Okay. So, and, and we're going to have him put his arm over here across your chest, Jade, like touching yep. nipple? Okay. We've there even done these standing, so mm -hmm. you need to be careful because somebody's away. But, you know. Oh, perfect. Okay. Feet flat, make sure they're not, legs aren't crossed. Again, you want to wait until there's a nice oh, yeah. baseline again, and then we'll, we'll, we'll give it a try. Normally, we would wait the three minutes before we do anything to make sure everything stabilizes.
That's good. Okay, nice. One nice big deep breath. And blow it up to that 40. So for those on the screen at the bottom, you can see where the pressure is in the 40 down there. And stop, just relax. We're monitoring your blood pressure for the next couple minutes. So you can see the difference, you have much clearly, more clearly developed faces, you have an actual, uh, oops, sorry, Tony, early phase two, and I actually see a late phase two developing here. It doesn't have much of an overshoot, but again, it is still almost, it, the blood pressure did not really go much below baseline, so really he needs an even stronger stimulus, so really standing might be ideal, but I don't think we'll do that for the purpose of time. So we've got enough time for what we need to do our assessment. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. So you look at the systolic blood pressure for pressure recovery time. And as you can see, this is phase three here, this point. He is already above baseline. So his PRT is basically zero, right? Uh, if anything, you give him one second and he's clearly above. Um, so this is, this is, and he doesn't really have much of an overshoot again because there wasn't much of a drop before. This is as normal as it gets.